Hello, it is Tuesday, March 12th, 2019, and we are live, and we are speaking low right now because this is the end of the podcast. I'm recording it at the end. I've already recorded the conversation. You're going to enjoy it. We go balls deep into some hilarity, but know that we are potentially getting kicked out of our hotel literally as we speak because it is a late one, and they have night quiet time rules here. You'll hear all about it. You're going to love it, but I need to let you know before we get started that this is brought to you by our friends, your friends, the world's friends, planet and moon's friends, mm. SeatGeek. Mm. Yep. SeatGeek is the greatest ticket buying app on planet Earth because they scan all the other ticket buying platforms and make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. The best tickets you can possibly get for the best prices are coming from your friends at SeatGeek. You want to go watch some comedy? Yeah. They got the best tickets for it. Okay. You want to go watch some theater diner? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They got the best tickets for you. You want to go watch hockey, college basketball, NBA, anything happening, any live event, maybe even preseason baseball. So, is that what it's called? Spring training? Spring training. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea. Anywhere, anything you need tickets for, though, SeatGeek's got your back. And right now, if you use promo code PAT, you get $10 off your first order. Go live a little and experience SeatGeek. You're alive, but are you living? Go live and experience it live and buy some tickets from your friends at SeatGeek. Because you're not just buying tickets. You're buying stories, you're buying memories. Like, for instance, that one time we got kicked out of a fucking hotel for doing a podcast <laughs> oh, at yeah. 1 a.m. <laughs> We're probably going to get kicked out of our uh, hotel room for sure. this particular podcast. Walls are thin, and there is a strict sign as soon as you get off the elevator on our floor, which I have never seen in my entire life before. We have a strict quiet time policy here at the Marriott in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania after 9 p.m. Keep it the fuck down. Mm-hmm. This is basically what they've said. You're not you're, you're not mentioning too, there's a nice little baby looking up at you on that side. It is like, hey, there is kids here, yeah. so after 9 p.m. We, we have a bedtime here at Marriott. Mm-hmm. So the bad thing for them and for us is this is just a, an unfortunate situation. It has to happen. Yep. Tough but fair. Stern. Mm. But, but fair. Right. Oh, okay. Thought we we're going to keep with the fair theme because that's what we are. But it is 11.50 p.m. Monday, March 11th. You are listening here Tuesday, March 12th. Mm-hmm. Myself, at Nick Morado, at Boston Connor, at Evan Foxy, mm-hmm. for the last couple of days have been a couple road dogs. Oh, oh. See, that's the type of shit that's going to get us kicked out of the hotel. Eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Just did a bird call because we are the road hawks. Mm-hmm. Save it. Save it. Okay. We've been on the road here. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. with WWE on Saturday afternoon yep. when there was a tornado happening in the Midwest. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're talking about orange and reds on the Dopplers mm-hmm. all the way across Indiana and Ohio. We suited and booted and jumped into Frank Moraldo's brand new Jeep Wrangler. Nice Jeep, the tank. <sighs> this car is brand new. <laughs> Brand new. Nope. Drove it three times. Not a lot of melees, miles on this Jeep Wrangler. Mm-mm. Don't even know how to move the seat, like up and back, actually. Haven't figured out all the buttons on the car yet, how brand new it is for Nick. And this is something because Nick has had the Subaru for about 45 years now. Long time. 10 years. Let's be honest. I mean, I paid the thing off. Thought I was going to just drive it into the ground. But, you know, I decided to treat myself, reward myself. I said, Nick, you work hard. Yeah, you do. You're a good guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're one of the most humble and honest people you know. Probably the best in the history of being humble at at being humble. Ever. The best I've ever known. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, it's time. Reward yourself. Get yourself a new vehicle. So I did. And here we are. We take it to Cleveland. We have a nice night. Well, let's talk about the ride a little bit. I mean, the ride to Cleveland. We... We went right into the eye of a storm. Monsoon, if you will. First of all, uh, this is Nick's car, but Nick was not driving on this trip. No, no, everybody no. knows that's listening. Yeah, <laughs> just had to make sure. Just had to make sure. I don't ride. I, I don't do the ride <laughs> thing. I, it's not my thing. I've had Uber drivers get out of the driver's seat and sit shotgun while I drive their Uber <laughs> car. I don't like riding in cars. I don't mind driving, but I can't just sit there. I get antsy. I get I get annoying to the driver, too. 
I just get car sick. I mean, there's so many negatives mm-hmm. to me mm-hmm. sitting in a car and riding. Like one Uber trip around Pittsburgh here, and I almost vomited. This dude was driving <laughs> yeah. a minivan. I can't do it. I can <laughs> drive, though. So since we were going to hit the road to Cleveland, where the fast lane was, mm-hmm. because the WWE invited us to come. What an way. awful place, by the way. We'll get to that, too. Nick just buried Cleveland the entire Come time. He, he refused to embrace the place. Right. Yeah. He as we were for it. He, he was, refused to embrace the place. <laughs> There's a lot of history in Cleveland. Oh, yeah. A lot of history. <laughs> you ever heard of the first ever enclosed shopping center, 1890, right there in Cleveland? They didn't call it a mall. They called it an arcade. Mm-hmm. Interesting naming, but still a good thought. Yeah, That's what we're it. screaming from the rooftops about in Cleveland. That's, That's what, what we're say. proud of. It's unbelievable. Beautiful place. We literally just walked into it. What a joke. Uh, Embarrassing. That's what see what you're hearing here is exactly how he acted mm-hmm. in there. But the getting, entire time. getting there, it was a rough one. I mean, it was windy in that Jeep Wrangler. Mm-hmm. And Jeep Wranglers, I had one whenever I was in high school. It that thing is a box. So that thing, like if Mother Nature wants to give a good hop <laughs> blow, the Jeep Wrangler goes, Oh no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It oh, does yeah. it does some dodging. It was moving. It was raining very hard. Yep. Very hard. There was a lot of rain hitting the windshield. Mm-hmm. Also, maybe rocks hitting the windshield. Yeah, a few Potential of rocks because we drove right into a storm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And really, there was nothing anybody could do. You never know what's going to pop up. Oh, yeah. No, because there was like the trucks were driving yep. and the trucks were, they had 18 wheels. Mm-hmm. You do the math, nine on each side, nine wheels kicking up rain yep. and, and shit off the, the, the road into the Jeep Wranglers thing. Scary situation. You can only see about 100 feet in front of you, too. I don't 100? even know. 100 feet. I'm being feet. generous. Uh, it's very generous. There was a couple times there where I, I was very confused. What was it, 10? I didn't, know, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know we were still on the road a couple times. When there wasn't a car in front of us with their brake lights, it got a little sketchy there. I'm going to be honest. I think we played it off. I, I think we played it off. <laughs> yeah, it went great. Yeah, it, it went great for sure. I'm glad I wore my uh, NASA jumpsuit because you drive a car like a spaceship, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we, were go- we, were going- <laughs> we, we weren't a lick under 90 that entire ride. And keep in mind, this whole time we're just slowly moving with the, the orange Doppler yeah. radar that's going from Indianapolis to Cleveland. We kept up with the storm. <laughs> yes. I felt like we yes. could- I think the storm was moving at the exact same pace as us. And even when we stopped to get gas, the storm was like you know what yeah let's take a piss break <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they stuck with us the entire trip from indy to cleveland mm-hmm. and i am a good driver ari line dyke taught me how to drive i drove the pace car at, at the angie's mm-hmm. list I, I don't know how many hundreds angie list that was grand prix there wasn't a hundreds it was a grand prix mm-hmm. it was an indy car race mm-hmm. where they had a street course though okay do you know what I'm talking about, the street course? Oh, yeah. So there's like 13 or 14 turns. I don't remember the exact. If you would have asked me right afterwards, I would have known because I memorized the course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't supposed to be the guy, okay? I was supposed to be like an actual celebrity. Oh. Old Cuzzy drops out like two days before the race. Two days before the Angie's Grand, Angie's List Grand Prix. Cuzzy drops out two days before. So Doug Bowles, good guy at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Oh, yeah. He uh, married Connor Daly's mother. Huh. Connor Daly doing a podcast for the Indy Star, by the way. Saw that. Oh, nice. Huh. Hmm. Indy Star. Hmm. He let us break the news, though, that he was in the thing. True. I don't know how we feel about Connor. I mean, I like Connor's a friend of ours. Good oh, guy. Yeah. But I mean, if he's going to do a podcast, there's literally a podcast company in town that he's friends with. Small business. Small business. That's what I'm saying. Friend uh, you know, of the show. Just connecting dots. Local journalism, yeah. jo- local journalism, though. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. But right, in right. my head, I'm like, wait a minute. Hmm. Curious. Anyways, Doug Bowles married his mom. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and Doug Bowles sends me a text and says, on Saturday, would you like to drive the pace car for the Angie's List Grand Prix? And I said, is, is this a real question? There's Because, yes, I would love to do that. He goes, okay, don't tell anybody. I have to see if you're cleared by Chevy. Oh. So Chevy Ooh. has to give the clear. So I guess he tells Chevy, Chevy hops in a plane, flies to Indianapolis on Friday, and they're like, uh, you're going to take some practice rounds. Head Chevy people were smart there. Smart by them. Yeah, very smart by yeah. them. They Googled me, and at that point, not the best resume. I mean, we, we had the mugshot first thing that's popping up. Not the worst. So, so the Chevy people were like, well, goddamn. So they show up. It's a stick. It was a Corvette. It's a nice car. That Our thing boy. was very nice. Mm-hmm. And I had never seen the course before. So the other guy who was supposed to do it, I guess, he had like, the the course sent to him on a paper for him to memorize yes. like a couple weeks beforehand. 
I had no idea. Mm -mm. So I get behind the wheel, and I'd, I've driven a stick before, but mm -hmm. I knew the Chevy people were a little bit worried about what could potentially go wrong. Because you crash that car, mm -hmm. makes Chevy look very bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, you can see that. And the Grand Prix has a lot of turns, so it's not just like a left turn, left turn. It's a left, left right, left, 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 right. It's like life. Left. left. You know, it's not easy. Right, left, left, right, right. Yeah, left. left. It's not just left, 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 left. It's left, right, right, left, slow right, sharp left. Ooh. Ooh. Like you turn at one Jeez. point. Drifting. Slow down. No, no, you don't drift in any car because then you lose all your leverage. That's but anyways. Is this guy serious? He's an idiot. It was a question. It was definitely a pain. question. It was a question. Accelerate there, at the apex, bro. There was a... Great. Come on. You you might went to the same class as I went to because you sounded a lot like me sounds. Well, he was in the car club. He knows. He, he was in I Nitrous was not, Rush. Yeah, I was not. not. Hey, me neither, though. So I went in there, no Nitrous Rush, mm. no car club, just me and Ari Leindyke, who happens to have the fastest lap in Indy 500 history. Oh, that's a fun fact for you. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if he's the fastest car ever on the track or the fastest lap on the track. One or the other. His kid was on The Bachelor. Which just ended, I think, last night from what I've been oh, told. Yeah. I wish Ty was here because mm. Ty knows The Even Bachelor. He does. This would be like a very topical pop culture thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. This could take this show to a whole nother level if we did an entire Bachelor breakdown. I know his name's Colton. Colton. That's hopped the fence. I, I know he hopped the fence, yes. too. Yeah. Good hop. It was a pretty good hop. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other people hopping fences that shouldn't be hopping fences. No, no. Everybody knows when you hop a fence, you just get those hands on top, and then you just let it do what it do. Yeah. Yes. You just give it a little springboard off the top there. Yeah. Anyways, he we're in the Corvette, two Chevy suits there. Oh, okay. They were very nice to me, though. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And I thought about, because I have a lot of cars now. Mm -hmm. I have a car that has over 600 horsepower. That's nice. Uh, that's, that's, I have a Shelby. I have a Tesla. It's like literally the quickest car on the road. It moves. I have a lot of cars. I have some experience in the car game. Chevy people don't know this, though. Mm. So I thought about as, as soon as I get in the car and there's like a ceremonial picture happening and I'm pulling off. I thought about giving that thing a little hum hum, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought about giving that a little hum 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 and give her a little burn of the rubber. Oh, right. yeah. Because old Cousy knows how to flutter the clutch. <laughs> mm, <little road> <laughs> <hot>. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. And I was thinking about doing it. My yeah. mom and dad were there, I believe. Like, this is a big moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't, though. I did a nice. Mm. I said, I want to get this job. This would be a cool thing to do. Professional. Right. So I just <laughs> slowly. <laughs> then Chewbacca. Arline, that was purr. the engine. Not bad. Oh, okay. Little engine purr. So Is it like a little Wookiee a little bit. Well, I'm happy to know that I can do an impression of the, good. You the should, thing. You should take yep. pride in that. What's his name? Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Chewy. Chewy. Chewy the Wookiee. Of course. He's that big hairy thing. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Crossbow. That lo The mom put the mask on, did the thing in the car, and then she was on all the late night talk shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the thing? Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of that thing. Anyways, Ari Leindyke is a guy. I think he's from the Netherlands. I oh, hey, Dutch. Okay. Yeah, I think he's Dutch. He has an accent. Really cool. I two things I can't stand. Go on. People who are intolerant of other people's cultures. Yep. And the Dutch. Absolutely. And Cleveland. That's you. And Cleveland. Mm -hmm. That's three things. Cleveland's you, not a culture. Let's be honest. Hey, he was burying Cleveland. They hated still Cleveland. burying still, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. Why is he? But Cleveland was nice, by the way. And to get there, I had to drive the car line dike because I drove <laughs> that course for three hours on one night. And the Chevy people were just waiting there, basically. Like, yep, we're going to watch him run every single one. This motherfucker with a mugshot with the hair looking like goddamn Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> that song, bitch, ain't crashing this thing. And Ari Leindyke was like an incredible coach. Incredible coach. Yeah. I learned the line that night. I learned like everything. I would, He gave me one to take home. Like he really was invested in me. And then whenever it was showtime, I mean, he was like, let's go. And he was lying to the people about how fast we were going. Like during the celebration laps. Oh, so he was all in. I like that. Yeah, Let's he was go. lying like to them. That. They're like uh, on the here on the head on the headset thing. They're like, uh, "What's your what's your speed?" or something like that. And he was reading the speed, and he and I were both looking at the speedometer. I'm like, "This motherfucker can't read." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know it had like it had like seventy five on it or something. He was, was like, he giving in kilometers. He was no. He was like uh, he's you know, Dutch. Yeah, I don't. I oh, think yeah. it might have been in that. Anyways, like he was oh. he, he was asking because he was just saying fifteen under. Oh, Does that okay, make sense? Okay. So yeah, yeah, he yeah. was yeah. telling him that we're going 90, we're at like 105, because I think he wanted me to go faster. He was very nice of him. He was like, go for it, go for mm -hmm. it. But I learned the lines, yeah, you see, in the vision. 
And whenever you look into your rear view mirror, by the way, and you just see like 32 of those little rocket ships that those fucking idiots are driving, <laughs> it's very interesting because they're up on your shit, especially in those turning ones. Yeah, right. And I just had to keep the blinders on. Chuck Pagano. <laughs> had to keep the blinders on. <laughs> so every time I get in a car now, that's the confidence that I drive with. I'm a big racing guy, and obviously I know this, but for the people who don't know what a line is, perhaps, yeah, uh, what is that? Well, you go in low, out high. You go in low, out high, so that you can utilize the momentum coming out of the turn to continue to propel your car at the fastest possible fashion. Mm -hmm. And on those indie tracks that I race on mm -hmm. and drive on, if you get off the line, there's this thing called marbles, which is like rocks because it's been cleared. On the line, it's cleared. So when you're off the line, all the shit's been kicked in there. It's called the marbles because it sounds as if marbles are in your tires. Ooh. It's like... <laughs> it really does sound like... It, it, you, the car is telling you, like, yo, you're not supposed to fucking be out here. That's mm -hmm. what the car is yep. telling you. So you, as soon as you get back on the line, there's no sound. So you can continue to go. Does stay, that make sense? Stay off the marbles. Stay off the marbles, okay. bro. But I go for it when I get in a car. Most aggressive go. driver I've ever been with, for sure. Aggressive? Mm. In a good way, like finesse. Yep. Finesse. I finesse. Aggressive yep. finesse. No, no. That's I mean, both. Skillfully. But aggressive. Because even in situations where you don't have to be aggressive, you'll finesse your way just to get an extra five seconds. Yeah, well, just only five seconds. Hey, when you know you're fit, you know you're fit. And you know how to squeeze it between a truck or two. I'll tell you what. The, the best is when I make those plays. You know, I make those plays. Yeah. And uh, the people end up passing me at the red light like what that yeah, we yeah. get up yeah. to. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, it's just a slow, it's always just a slow look from the other people. And then it's a nasty one while they're still, <laughs> while they're, they're so disgusted that they're sharing the road with somebody who drives like me. Yeah. Like, get off my dick. Do you see that move I just made? Get out of here, bro. I like driving. I got good vision. It's made me good at soccer mm -hmm. and out of cannon. Probably would have been good running back if I wasn't soft. Yeah. I can see it. Those yeah. are glory days. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the punting worked out, so we don't have to think about Frank Gore mm. running backs. <clears throat> hey, you guys are learning a lot about us here on the Roadhawks. Roadhawks. Road uh, I just want to let you know that the right hire can make a huge impact on your business. That's why it's so important to find the right person. But where do you find that individual? You can post a job on a job board and hope the right person will find your job. But think about it. How often do you hang out on job boards? Yep, answer that went through all of our heads was never. <laughs> Don't leave finding someone great to chance when you can post your job to a place where people go every day to make connections, grow in their career, and discover job opportunities. You go to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Most LinkedIn members haven't recently visited the top job boards, but 9 out of 10 members are open to new opportunities. And with 70% of the U.S. workforce on LinkedIn, posting on LinkedIn is the best way to get your job opportunity in front of more of the right people. People are qualified for your role and ready for something new it's the best way to find the person who will help you grow your business and why a new hire is made every 10 seconds using linkedin one two three four five, five six, six seven eight, eight nine ten wow hired congrats congrats to you congrats to everybody who chooses to use linkedin because you're already winning before the thing even starts Ooh. Hurry to linkedin.com slash McAfee and get $50 off your first job post. That's linkedin.com slash McAfee to get $50 off your first job post. linkedin.com slash McAfee. Terms and conditions apply. Obviously, back to the convo. The driving worked out, too. We got to Cleveland. Love that city, man. Yeah. Quick side note. Yeah. Boston Market still bangs. Hey. Oh. Boston Always Market. bangs, bro. Mm -hmm. So good. We had a quick pit stop there. And everybody here had an incredible meal, except for the one person who ordered a deli sandwich from Boston Market. Rotisserie chicken spinning in the back. He ordered a Subway sandwich from Boston Market. Oh, I, had, child. I had an entire oh, rotisserie chicken in front of me. Nick had an entire Thanksgiving meal. I believe Evan Fox had like a barbecue. Uh, barbecue bar chicken sandwich. Barbecue chicken sandwich. And Connor, the 12-year-old of the group. From the, Boston. The youngest hawk. Yes. The loudest hawk mm -hmm. from Boston <laughs> at Boston Market just ordered complete shit and was roasted for what he was wearing, what he ate, not only by us, but sweet old ladies in tiny towns in Ohio. Uh, well, I mean, here's the thing, guys. Like you said, I'm the youngest road hawk here. Not all the hawks get the good meat. Some have to get the run of the litter. And I know that. I'm not going to go up there and get a rotisserie chicken. How do I know you three? 
don't want to go up for round two. I'm not going to steal that thunder for you. Yeah, give me the run. Hey, hold on, hold on, care. Connor, Connor, Connor. There was literally 42 chickens spinning in the back. <laughs> Did you see that place? And they had headsets on, and they were standing four feet away from each other, yep. which was a magical moment. Magical. Yeah. Connor got somebody in trouble because they refused to use the headset. They just turned around and talked to the other person, and they got yelled at for not using the headset. It was quite a situation, quite kind of scene, which is kind of what happens whenever Connor goes anywhere, by the way. Look, I need <clears throat> you to get me a rotisserie chicken. What? What? <laughs> God, God, just give me a rotisserie chicken hey, sandwich. Hey, right? hey, hey. It oh, is yeah. Literally. The hotel. Is, I forgot. This guy. 1208. Th- this is what I was just about to talk about. His situ- situational awareness is dog shit. Mm-hmm. Connor's it's, is such dog shit. It's under par. We walk into a quiet hotel where the WWE has put us in, which is what we're in right now, screaming in our room. But we walk into this, the oldest uh, indoor mall shopping center in the history of America. Mm-hmm. It's got this beautiful architecture. Beautiful. And Connor just walks into it and just starts yelling. <laughs> and it just starts fucking echoing through this whole place. You think panels from 1890 are about to fall off the wall from his piercing, shrieking voice. It's just situational awareness 101, and you don't got it. Yeah. We go to the casino in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. We win some money down there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Blackjack dealer was very nice, dealing a lot of heaters for us. We go over to crap stable, got kind of bullied by the dealers a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Gotta yeah. be honest, got kind of bullied. I lost some money there. But we ended up up as a group. Go to sleep, call it a night. Next day, prepare for fast lane. WWE fast lane. Did a watch along thing. It was a great time. Awesome. Yeah, you slayed it. Three and a half hours was that? Long time, Carl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Long time. We're watching WWE Fastlane. A lot of things happened there. Live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for the WWE. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it was a blast. A lot of people came through. Very thankful for all the guests that came through. Um, I enjoyed everything about it. The Revival did a Dirty Dance situation. Two men, very large and tough men, did a Dirty Dance scene, and mm-hmm. then they touched their beards to each other, which mm-hmm. was magical. Put them yep. together like puzzle pieces. The Iconics talked about Australia a little bit. They believe it's a real place because we did dive into that in the car a little bit. Yeah. Got to ask. I mean, I did. I had to ask. Mm-hmm. There's a real conspiracy out there that I did not know until yesterday. Like, Diggs is in on it. He said it a couple times, but I thought that was just a, a dumb Diggs thing. It's no, no. It's a real thing. Like people believe that Australia is is a hoax. Yeah, South America. I mean, there's a serious case that Australia is just actually South America. Well, they say that every commercial pilot that flies to Australia is in on it, and they just fly to South America instead. And all the accents are computer generated. This is a real thing on the internet. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know a lot of Australian people, so I got to sit down with two yeah. Australian. I people. mean, a place that just is filled with beautiful women and Instagram models and then deadly creatures. Sounds a little fishy. That's so you said fire festival right there. I heard it. Yeah, I exactly. And that mm-hmm. was all fantasy land. Something to think about. I asked them. They said they think it's real. So they're from there. They said they think it's real. Apparently, that's what they would say. But all you got to do if you're if you're there the whole time, if you're told yellow is green the entire time, right. your whole life, you're going to believe that. Mm-hmm. And if the pilots, every single pilot that flies every single plane from every different commercial airliner that uh, travels from every single country, oh, big pilots in on it for sure. Big pilots all in on it. Whenever you leave, you never know because that pilot's saying welcome to Australia, goodbye, see Australia. Yeah. Flying around pieces of Australia, South America, you never know. Did the fast lane thing. It was a blast. Drove here to Pittsburgh. Hit up the casino and Rudy's Subs today. Oh, Rudy's yeah, Subs was all great. All time. Delicious. Great sandwiches. Saw our CFO, who is rocking a pretty solid ponytail. <laughs> yeah, and he's also rocking a pretty nice beard on his shoulders. Yeah, he's got the hairiest <laughs> arms I've ever seen in my entire life, but he was supporting the merch. Uh, not a lot of the sleeveless hoodies are out there, so he has one, and he has massive arms. Great beard. He does wildly hairy arms yeah we took those hairy arms right to the casino and guess what we did again in pittsburgh we proceeded to go ding a ling a ling a ling a ding a ling a ling a ling a ding a ling a ling a ling a ding 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 jackpots jackpots got hot on the blackjack table all of us did it was a road hawk sweep of that blackjack mm, yeah, table. not to mention the roulette walk it out oh see you later 100 bucks everybody puts on black let's keep it moving walk it off. we go to the cashier we all cash out we're going to go to monday night raw in pittsburgh we get a couple extra cash connor sees four wheel of fortune mm-hmm. slot machines staring at him staring mm-hmm. staring so connor walks over there and he goes oh which one should i do <laughs> loud <laughs> very sure. loud I wasn't sure. I wasn't very sure. loud there's four options there he doesn't know he doesn't pick which one uh arms fill Tells him the second one from the left yes. is the one he likes. Nick just cuts in front of him, sits down in the one right next to that. Three max bet spins. Whammy, whammy, whammy. 
Wheel of Fortune thing goes off. Here we go. Spin to win, it says. The highest number on there is 1,000. Frankie boy, what you hit? 1,000. You got it. We it. screamed. It was nice. We screamed in that thing. All of a sudden, ding a ling a ling a ling a ding a ling a ling a ling Couple more hundos in the pocket for old Nick Moraldo. Connor could have had that one. He was indecisive. He only won like twenty bucks in the one next to it. Still a winner. Still yep, a winner. Still a winner. Which is a routine for us. It's starting to become something we do. Now it's time to move on to our all time favorite underdog success story. Mm-hmm. Movement. The watches. Founded on belief that style shouldn't break the bank, they've sold almost 2 million watches worldwide by bringing quality designs at fair prices. Movement watches are all about looking good while keeping it simple. They don't tell you how many steps you've taken or blow your wrist up with text messages. We don't need that. No. No. Uh -uh. No. That's what my phone's for. Don't put a phone on your wrist. No, that doesn't make sense. Put something that looks damn good and is affordable. They're not overly intrusive on life with notifications, text messages, emails, etc. They tell time like true classic time pieces should, and they look damn good doing it. I love the my movement watch. Yeah. I'm not a big watch guy. Everybody knows I wasn't a big watch guy until I got introduced to movement because they're not screwing people over by mm-hmm. charging mm-hmm. too much, and they look as if they did charge a bunch of money, yep. which is what it is all about. Right now, you get 15% off with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash McAfee. That's MVMT. MVMT.com slash M-C-A-F-E-E. Movement's launching new styles on their site all the time. Check out their latest at MVMT.com slash McAfee. Join the movement. Sunglasses also very dope. Yeah. Very, very. Let them. Hey, you go look at those sunglasses from MVMT.com slash McAfee. You're going to be like, yo, great sunglasses at MVMT.com slash McAfee. Also, the watches don't break the bank. Style minimalism. You you heard it. <laughs> Back to the show. <laughs> then we go to Monday Night Raw, and we're on TV a lot. Yeah. Hey, shout out to the WWE for being so damn nice. Yes. They are the best. <clears throat> They're the best, dude. Yes. I'm a new fan mm-hmm. of the WWE. So it's all brand new to you. All brand new to me. And I said to Nick tonight walking in, this is the first match where like I was excited to see the storylines. Because obviously we're going there. I, I was excited to be there, but to actually find out what was going to happen. Let's be honest, too. We didn't really give them a choice. We were loud, proud, and ruckus right there in the front we were, row. Yep. Very loud. We were very much on TV. The internet was telling us the crowd was dead. I didn't think so. I thought the crowd was pretty good. Now, granted, that might have been us just yelling the whole time, though. Yeah, sure. I mean, we did our part. We were into it. I lost Absolutely. my voice. I'm actually losing my voice right now, which never happens to be. You can ask my mom. That is not a motherfucker. I'm gassed. Mother. I feel like I went to war out there. I feel like I wrestled. I'm exhausted. A lot of people got beat up in front of us. Yeah, a lot of them. I don't like it. I was pounding on the boards there like it was a hockey game. <laughs> Let's go, boys. Triple H, Dave Batista created one of the most uh, memeable moments, gifable moments in 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 long time where Dave Fair. Batista is begging for what he wants. <laughs> yeah. Give it, give it to me. Give me what I want. <laughs> give me what I want. Give me what I want, he says. Very angrily. And we just said McAfee for uh, Monday Night Football. Mm-hmm. Because there's one guy today that I talked to who wanted to motivate me to continue to push that campaign. Yep. yep. It was a little part of free agent frenzy because we will dive into that entirely right after this conversation with the beautiful Rich Eisen. That happened on NFL Network, by the way. I will mention this at the end of this interview. The NFL Network had me on a show. Good Morning Football? No. NFL AM was mm. the name of the show. Yep. I was like a weekly guest on there. Those are like my people. I flew out in the off season, woke up at like 1 a.m. because they filmed it in L.A. It was a morning show. Did the whole thing. Then that, that show got pulled. Ooh. Canceled. Oh. See ya. Oh. And I've never been back on another NFL Network show. Never. Never been asked back. Never. Except for on the internet. On the internet. They had me on the internet show. Yep. On the okay. check down and yep. stuff like that. Never been asked back. So today, Rich Eisen was doing his show on NFL Network, Ooh. sends me a text, goes, hey, I'd like to have you on NFL Network with what me today. I said, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. And it went well. All pro punter Pat McAfee here on the Rich Eisen Show on the NFL Network. How are you, Patrick? Uh, 
I'm fantastic after that incredible introduction, Mr. Eisen. Thank you so much for that. Also, since we are talking free agent frenzy and the frantics behind it all, yes. you could also say I was once franchise tagged in that introduction, but you didn't. No worries. You missed wow. something every once in a while. It's <laughs> no. an honor to be here. NFL Network is a great place to be. I appreciate Especially that. in this free agent frenzy. Now, when you were franchise tagged, would you say the franchise tag was placed on you or slapped on you? What you say? Uh, it was slapped right in my face. Uh, definitely. You were not definitely pleased? Slapped right. What's that? You were not pleased with the franchise tagging? You didn't want to be franchise tagged as a punter? No, I was very excited. It was more money than I could have ever imagined in my entire <laughs> life. All of my contracts with the NFL were. But it was yeah. definitely put upon me like, yeah, you're not going anywhere. No, we're not negotiating with you anymore. We'll see if you have another good year. Wham! Right on the face. That's what happened. Uh, but I loved it. It was a lot of guaranteed money. Made okay. my family very comfortable. And it's just the NFL is the league that never stops giving, just like it's doing today this with <laughs> massive amounts of Brinks trucks being backed up into people's homes all over the country right now. So are you in the city of Pittsburgh right now, the great city of Pittsburgh, Patrick? I am city of bridges, okay. city of champions, so what city are, of Iron City Lights, city what, of Permani Brothers. Here what, I am, right <laughs> in the middle of it for WWE Monday Night Raw, and it is an electric place right now with this Antonio Brown news. Well, so give me the general sense of what fans are are thinking. Yinzers here love the Ben Roethlisberger, love that he can sling the ball all over the yard, any yard. Very excited that Antonio Brown is gone. Very excited that Lev Bell is gone. Really? Yinzers think that they were bringing a lot of drama to the city. They think that the team is much more likable now, although they might not be as talented. And even though they only got a third and a fifth rounder for Antonio Brown, they still feel as if the Steelers have won because they can move past the real housewives of Pittsburgh situation that was happening inside the locker room. I have no idea if that's true or not because the Cleveland Browns seem to be getting better and better. I'll be excited to see what happens in the AFC North, but Yinzers everywhere are rejoicing for Antonio Brown being gone, and I'm not sure that's the right play. I'm not saying they're right at all, but they seem to be happy about it all being over and moving forward. What do you think's happening in the locker room there in Pittsburgh? What do you think? I don't know. Managing egos, I think you and I have talked about this, managing egos is a huge part of the modern NFL. I mean, with the way social media is, everybody's their own brand, everybody's their own business, the ability to handle people who are great at things is a huge part of management these days. So I'm not sure if that will scare away other superstars from coming to the beautiful city of Pittsburgh in mm -hmm. the future. I'm just thinking that they're hoping that the young stars like Juju and whoever else comes in to fill in is just uh, takes a different path. But I think right now, if you look at the Steelers organization, you'll be one that is historically great, a lot of wins. they got a passionate fan base. But here in the recent history, has been surrounded by drama due to not being able to manage uh, attitudes and personalities. And I think that's very obvious. And this next phase, next era, the Stillers are going to be a very impressive one. We'll see how many more years Ben Roethlisberger has throwing the ball around here in Pittsburgh. Well, Pat McAfee, if, um, as I said at the beginning of this frenzy, as well as my show, uh, the Rich Eisen Show, as it's named, um, and if Antonio Brown Instagram lived and tweeted his way in a way into the spot that he wanted, how is your social media campaign to get you in the Monday night football seat going right now, Pat? I think the campaign went very well. You know, it got you into a little bit of trouble with Kurt Warner, which I love. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, it did. That's true. <laughs> right. We trended for 10 hours, McAfee for Monday Night Football. Our intel, which means my agents told me yes. that the day after we trended for 10 hours, there was an entire meeting at ESPN for the Monday Night Football position. My name was mentioned less than once. So <laughs> I, I think the media campaign that we ran went, I think the campaign was a good one, but we're not results <laughs> Oriented here. I don't think that we're going to get the results that we're looking for, but we definitely disrupted the whole situation, and you helped out immensely with that, so I'm thankful for you forever. So you refer to it in the past tense. It's over just because ESPN held a meeting and yeah, you weren't mentioned on. once? Pat, come on. What are we doing? Come on. With, right? Listen, sometimes you got to get your ass out there, and you find that dog, you know? Sometimes you've got to do that, and we went for it. There was a lot of tweets. There was a lot of action. There was a lot of movement, right. but there's literally nothing we can do if we're not in a meeting. I mean, that, that's a pretty important meeting to be a part of this. There, if you're campaigning for a position that people control, and then the people that control that are having a meeting, and they don't even mention your name, it's going to be tough to keep campaigning, but I'm all about getting back on the trail, sending some tweets out, some characters, some hashtags, and see if we can make Monday nights the most electric night of football again, but... 
It's not my decision to be made. It's okay. not yours either. We just got to sit back and see what happens. Yeah, just and, and let the chips fall. Uh, before I let you go, uh, can we put up on the screen, my friends at the NFL Network, put up on the screen, uh, the top free agent punters, because punters are free agents too. Um, Pat, Bradley Pinion, Pat O'Donnell, Ryan Allen, if you're, if you're one of left-legged variety, uh, Jordan Berry and Donnie Jones. What do you think of this class of free agents for punters, Pat? Okay, so Donnie Bag of Bones Jones has enough swag to carry and fill an entire locker room. He's also a Super Bowl champion who came out of retirement. Big lefty, hits the ball high and far down the middle of the field. So you're depending upon what you want. He only has one ball, but it's a good ball. Ryan Allen has been in massive situations, so you know the butthole isn't going to pucker if you're in a big spot, which is a big deal for a specialist because there's a lot of pressure on you. Bradley Pinion has the ability to be a great punter. He hits the ball well. It goes far. I'm not sure he's got into a consistency that he's looking for. We'll see if that happens in a new spot. San Francisco also a very windy place. Pat O'Donnell has become a completely different punter. He eliminates returners. He's not going to put up the huge numbers, but he's not going to give up many return yards as well. I'll be excited to see what he does. And then there's the Australian bomber, Jordan Berry, who has a cannon of a leg from down under, but I don't know if he's confident at the time being enough to step on the field and do it every single time. You get him a little bit of cash, maybe that builds the confidence. There's a lot of bombers out there ready to hit balls on fourth downs. I'll be excited to see where the chips fall if we're talking in Rich Eisen terms. Thank you, Pat. Bless you, sir. You're a, you're a man who should not give up. I just heard some analysis that's an all-four-down analysis. They call Landon Collins a box safety. You are not a box broadcaster, sir if I may say. Wow, that makes me feel really good. I'm about to run through a brick wall here, maybe send out another tweet. Maybe I'll just go camp outside of Bristol and see if they'll take a call or a conversation with me. But, Rich, I can't thank you enough. I'm not sure if Chris is in there. Tell him I said what's yeah, he's up. right there. And thanks for having me back on NFL Network. The last time I was on here, the show got canceled and I never got asked to come back. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Thank you so much. All right, take care, brother. For the brand, Pat. Yeah, okay. This is Pat McAfee bringing the frenzy to the free agency frenzy. Free agency was insane. We talked about a lot on there. A lot of things happened. We are in Pittsburgh. We just talked about before that how we got to Pittsburgh. Uh, Antonio Brown's situation seems to be one that this entire place is excited about. A lot of things happened today, though. Nick is going to run through those. We'll do instant reaction if we have any. Just know that the NFL is handing out cash right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people making a lot of money. It's almost making me want to go kick some balls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if they start <laughs> if they start overvaluing punters, like it, what is happening in a lot of things like mm-hmm, this, mm-hmm. hey, almost almost dumb not to go back. We'll see. Except for the vitamins T, H, and C. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. Go through the rundown. All right. uh, Let's start at the top. The most money here. Nick Foles, quarterback, obviously, Mm. from Philadelphia to Jacksonville, four years, $88 million. They couldn't wait to get rid of Blake Bortles. I mean, they're paying a lot of money right there. And I think this is a good move for them. They got a good team. Maybe that defense will be Mm re-energized with a Super Bowl champ in there, a Super Bowl MVP. I think it's good news and good move for Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Arguably the prize of free agency here on the defensive side. Landon Collins, free safety going from the Giants to a division rival Redskins. We're pissed off about this. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going to good teams. Right. Teams are getting Raiders are getting built up. Rams getting good players. Mm-hmm. The Lions are becoming a good Here we team. Go. Wait, 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 what'd you say? The Lions are making plays. Wh- which ones? The the animals. Nope, the Detroit ones. Detroit Lions. Oh. Hey, I'll tell you what. Foxy, Foxy's Foxy been a Lions fan for a long time. My whole life. Through a lot of hard times. 24 years of it. Mm. When I talked to Matt Patricia before that Packers-Lions game, he basically said, like, I just need to get my guys in here, my type of guys in here. The Patriot way is what they're looking for, yep. and they have been making Patriot plays. Yeah. They've literally been making Patriot plays. Do not plays. overlook the McAfee bump in this entire thing. With the mm. Matt Patricia conversation. Absolutely. And we they go to Lambeau. You're calling the game. When have the Lions ever beat the Packers and held them to zero points? Yeah, and shut yeah. them out. Exactly. I had not a bad thought there. I'll take credit for it if that's the case because it looks like they're putting together quite a team mm-hmm. there, man. But Landon Collins goes to the Redskins. It's like, what are we doing? Well, yeah, yeah, it's tough. I mean, uh, he had a good career, I guess. I don't know. I mean, he's going to go there for another yeah, six man, years. Like, why are the Redskins doing this? That's like, what they do. L- let him go to a good. Let him go to a te- like a team team. Yeah, a contender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of contenders, Trent Brown leaves New England, yeah. goes to the Oakland Raiders, uh, four year deal, fifty four million dollars. He's going to be good. 
Yeah, we'll see. I'm sorry, $66 million. I was looking below here. Quan Alexander, the linebacker, goes from Ooh. Tampa Bay to San Francisco on a four-year deal for $54 million. Wow. Yeah, that's a big move, I think. Uh, Mitch Morse, the center from Kansas City, going to Buffalo, four years, $44 million. Tyron Matthew, the oh. safety, the honey badger, from the Texans to the Kansas City Chiefs. This makes Jeez. the Chiefs very good all yes. of a sudden. Jeez. They years, needed something. Mil. How much? Three years, $42 million. Oh, my God. He's so rich, by the way. <laughs> and he's so good. And remember, at people at LSU, people are trying to act like him having a marijuana yeah. failed test is going to ruin his life. This guy <laughs> just played football, man. He used to dominate college football. Now he dominates in the NFL. Now mm-hmm. he's on a contender. Now he's on a real team. Real team. Let's see what happens here. Uh, we had Trey Flowers going from New England to Detroit. Yep, to your Lions, up. Foxy. Good pass Big rusher one. there. Connor, you want to say your say your piece here? Uh, Trey, thank you. For, I know you're listening. Thank you for everything you did for us. All uh, right. You're Let's a go. great player. Uh, <laughs> I think, the, literally, I think the neighbors just woke up. There, I, think, I did hear some stirring. Yeah, I think we're too. getting kicked out. I'm sorry. Adam Humphreys, wide receiver, going from Tampa Bay to Tennessee. Four-year deal, $36 million. Justin Coleman, cornerback from Seattle to Detroit. Four years, $36 million. Mm-hmm. Kareem Jackson, safety from Houston to Denver. Three years. Years, $33 million. Malik Jackson, the D tackle, leaving Jacksonville, Jacksonville, going to Philly for three years, $30 million. Ooh. Jameson Crowder, this was an interesting one. Oh, yeah. Wide receiver, leaving the Redskins, going to the Jets, three years, $28 mil. Uh, Kenny Vaccaro, strong safety, Tennessee, resigns with Tennessee, four year, $26 million deal. Rob Alford, Atlanta to Arizona, $22 million. Bob. Wow. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Eric Weddle, obviously, yep. leaving Baltimore, going to the Rams, two year deal. Uh, Devin Funches. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming to Colts. Let's go. Finally mm-hmm. decided to spend some of that $100 million they got one year deal. Patient. Chris Ballard's being patient. Yeah. We know he's being patient. Right. Slow game. We, we know this guy knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dwayne Allen leaving New England, going to the Dolphins in Miami. Mm-hmm. Two year deal. Yeah, boy, Dwayne. Uh, Danny Amendola. Lions. The beautiful beaches of Miami, heading up to the Colts. He'll cold, do more, by the way, than on Detroit. He'll do more. It'll do more than just on the field stuff. You got to remember that's a good veteran locker room presence yeah. there, championship mentality. Gone you know. Distance. Speaking Security of blanket. vets, we got Carlos Hyde going from Jacksonville to KC on a one-year deal, and then we have Frank Gore going from Miami Let's to go. Buffalo. Awesome! Wow. That's going to be a ground and pound up there, for Frank Gore. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Those are the notables. Okay, so nice. this is what the NFL uh, realizes about itself: anytime it wants, it can take over the news cycle. Yes. Yeah. This is taking over. Not only Ian Rappaport sent out a tweet that EB was going to Buffalo Bills, and then I just heard the entire behind-the-scenes story. The NFL free agency process is absurd, and here's a conversation with a guy who's been inside of it for decades, decades. And I talked to him from right there on the phone about four or five minutes after I woke up mm. this morning. Mm. It's probably going to be obvious early, but I think the conversation went well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, joining me now while I sit in a hotel in his hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This man has been breaking news and reporting on the greatest league in earth, the NFL, for years and years and decades and decades. You can hear him now on the radio in Seattle. You can also hear him with his own podcast. He's a legend on ESPN and just in the reporting game in general. Ladies and gentlemen. Braddock, Pennsylvania native, Duquesne grad, John Clayton. Pat, how are you? And what are you doing in Pittsburgh? Are you filling uh, in for Antonio Brown or what? <laughs> you and I both know I'm nowhere near that athletic. I'm actually here with the WWE, but thank you for bringing up what I want to ask the one and only professor of this whole thing. It seems as if the Steelers might have an ego management problem with Lev Bell, James Harrison, now Antonio Brown. Is this an issue that's going to happen going forward? Or are they going to have to rebuild an entire young team around Juju, a solid defense, and an aging Ben Roethlisberger? What do you think happens at the Pittsburgh Steelers? Actually, I think they've now taken care of the problem because Le'Veon Bell is going to leave in free agency. They made the trade. So I think they've cleaned up the locker room now, and I think everybody in the locker room knows who's in charge. I mean, it's Ben Roethlisberger, and uh, you've got to perform the way he wants. I think that uh, Antonio had problems with that. 
Le'Veon was just uh, more money oriented than anything else. And so when you put that all together, it's uh, now I think it's a younger team clearly because you know Brown was in his 30s, Bell still in his prime, but uh, they're not going to be as talented. But I do think the locker room situation is going to be cleaned up, and it needs to be cleaned up because you can see it got out of control. Mike Tomlin has to make sure that uh, he has everybody now uh, more disciplined if guys are missing practice or showing late for meetings and all that. If not, he's not going to get a contract extension. So I think that the situation's now been cleaned up, but unfortunately for the Steelers, they're not as talented of a team. I think, and I've been saying this a little bit, managing egos is a real thing in the NFL, especially with the generation we're in now. Everybody has a social media. Everybody's kind of their own operating business. Everybody wants to flex. Uh, Managing egos is a real thing. The Steelers have not been great with it. They have not been great with it. Do you think if Juju becomes this massive superstar in a couple years, they're going to have the same problem? Or do you think it was strictly a case-by-case basis in a couple unfortunate situations? No, it's basically a case-by-case basis. And uh, I think in the case of Juju, he's pretty humble. And I think he's not going to go in that direction. You know, Antonio uh, has always been a little bit uh, different as far as how he handled things because you, know, you can see that uh, there's a little bit of diva in him. And uh, I think, and, and you know, from being in a locker room, a winning team for such a long period of time, the longer you're there, sometimes you know the, the players that have been there eight, nine years, they lose the voice of the coach because they've heard every speech. You know, they they have a you know, they have personality differences. Uh, that develops, but uh, no, I think at this stage, uh, this this has now cleaned the locker room up and made things uh, again not as talented. But I think they they should be okay going from here. The first weekend of the NCAA tournament is the greatest betting event mm-hmm. of the year. Oh yeah. Whether you like filling out a bracket, picking a national champion, predicting first-round upsets, or all of the above, my bookie is the perfect home for your March Madness fun. Will Zion Williamson and his teammates cement their legacy at Duke with a title? Can Virginia get past its loss to a 16 seed last year? And can, to, and can Kentucky get back to the Final Four? If you know the answers to that, or even if you don't, my bookie is the place to get in on the action. They have something for everyone, even you, multiple bracket guy. Ugh. My bookie has been in business for years and years. Their goal is to give you the best customer service in the business. And the best part is they pay out fast when you win. I'm talking 48 hours. Bet with the best. Then kick back and enjoy March Madness while you watch your picks cash. Deposit with MyBookie today with promo code PAT for a 50% sign-up bonus. That's promo code PAT with MyBookie. You play, you win, you get paid. Go get rich. MyBookie.ag. Use promo code PAT. Get a 50% deponus- bonus bonus. On your first deposit, the bonus. <laughs> Listen, you get a fifty percent the bonus. Yeah, there you get it. Good deal. I'm gonna make a bet right now. I bet the rest of the show is gonna be fantastic. Oh, I'll I, take that bet. I also bet that we're all gonna get rich with my bookie because Connor has been studying college basketball. He like, has been like a study hawk. I, the Ooh. road hawk, has been a study hawk. Yep. Let's just hope he isn't cock blocking any of us from getting a lot of uh, money. <laughs> from my <mind. laughs> have a good one. Okay, so the Steelers obviously a big storyline, as are the Raiders. They're potentially looking into Lev Bell as well, I guess. Pro Football Talk reported. Can I ask you about the story dropped at like one AM by Ian Rappaport that says that Antonio Brown is going to the Buffalo Bills. Whenever this free agent frenzy comes to be, it's the insider's paradise. It's time for the John Clayton's, the Schefter's, the Rappaport's, the Kuiper, or not the Kuiper's, the Mortensons, everybody. Like, this is the time of year. How do those conflicted stories get reported? Like, for instance, Amendola was going back to the Patriots, and now he's with the Lions. How does that stuff happen? Is it all just a work in progress? All these negotiations uh, could kind of change at any given moment. Is that the case? Oh, yeah, that, that happens. But the key is how you phrase things, because if you phrase it wrong, then it's going to be wrong, because there was a deal with the Bills and the Steelers, and the deal was basically one where they were going to swap picks in the first round, Steelers would move from 20 to 9, and a couple other draft choices were going to be thrown in. But like anything else, there's some complications. So, so for example, for that deal to get completed, 
uh, and this is why the phrasing of it is, so it's better to say you're, they're close to a deal as, a, as opposed to saying there's a deal. So what ended up happening is that uh, they gave the Bills permission to talk to Drew Rosenhaus, uh, the agent for uh, Antonio Brown, to see if he's interested in coming and if he was going to be a contract problem because, you know, Antonio's been saying that, uh, you know, he wants more money and uh, was going to demand trying to get it. And so when... Uh, you know, all of a sudden, Antonio starts tweeting out how much he didn't want to go to Buffalo. He puts on Instagram and Facebook and all these different pictures of what he thought B- Buffalo was going to be like because he put a bowling alley and a pizza joint and all that stuff. What's it going to be like living there? And so uh, that killed the deal. And uh, he almost killed the deal with the Raiders uh, in the sense that uh, you know they were having trouble negotiating the final price because after the Bills deal fell down, the Steelers had nothing. There was nothing on the, on the table. And so, you know, they got back together with the uh, Raiders. The Raiders offered the three and the five, and then they were negotiating on a new deal, and that almost fell apart. But like anything else, you know, close is close, but you can't say it's done until it's done because there's negotiations whether the player wants more money or doesn't want more money, and how much money is that going to be? Mike Mayock with a hell of a move fresh out of TV land to get a three and a five and $30 million. That's not being talked about enough. That It's not only just a three and a five. It's also $30 million that had to come into place to get Antonio Brown. This market seems to be a heavy safety market. Eric Weddle ends up at the L.A. Rams. What are some other moves with some safeties that you project or see happening? Well, I mean, and this one, the, the safety market's insane because if you go back to last year, uh, and look at like the top 20, 21, uh, safe, paid safeties. 10 or 11 of them are on the market right now, which is remarkable. I mean, they pretty well have wiped out, uh, you know, more than 15 starters either being cut on one year deals. And so what I think that's going to end up doing is bringing the value of some of the safeties down because the market should go up to 13 million, but now I don't think there will be. And I think you can see with particularly the move with Eric Weddle just getting a little over $5 million, you know, that was the first move that uh, you know, safety is getting less. We, we, last year's safety market was ridiculous. Nobody got hardly anything. Kenny Vaccaro, a former first-round pick, you know, had to just scramble to get a very low deal. But I think you're going to see Earl Thomas go to the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I think that you'll see maybe Landon Collins go to the Detroit Lions. That's a possibility. Collins, of course, I'm stunned that they didn't franchise him because they could have had him for $11.4 million, and he'll probably get about $11 million to go to Detroit. Uh, then I can see that the, you know, maybe the, the Giants are going to try to make a move on uh, Tyron Matthews, although I know Houston's going to try like crazy to get him re-signed, and they're still going to be able to do it. But this, this market's going to be absolutely insane for safeties, but I think there's only going to be maybe two that will get over $10 million. The rest of the group's going to get maybe between seven and nine million. What do you do on a day to day basis right now? Is this prime time for the professor? This free agency oh, run? Oh yeah, no question. Because you know, I, I try to keep track of every deal, and uh, you know, I, I have a database that uh, you know, eventually I'll get every contract and I'll put it into my database, and the database is there to uh, give me the salary cap numbers of every team, and so I'm, I'm constantly. Uh, you know, calling, checking, trying to get uh, everything there. But, uh, you know, I, I do a two-hour radio show here in Seattle, and that's going to be busy with the uh, free agency. That's going to be 10 to 12 uh, West Coast time. And then, of course, now I started writing a column for the Washington Post, so I'll be pos- uh, popping columns in for them. But it's a, it's a fun period because I just love the free agency part of it. I love the moves. You can get quick evaluations of them, and uh, that's what's uh, so much fun because, again, it's constant news action. You know, in the time that, uh, you know, we're talking, uh, there's probably going to be three or four deals that get done. Like, for example, right when we started, Malik Jackson just ended up getting a deal to go to the Philadelphia Eagles uh, for three years at $10 million. But, no, I love this because, again, it's just constant action, and then uh, it it's, will keep going pretty much until uh, July. You referenced there Drew Rosenhaus working the deal with the Buffalo Bills and it not paying off, so he had to do it with the Raiders. Do you check who free agents have as an agent, and does that make you lean one way or another on whether or not the person is going to get a good deal or a good outcome? Yeah, it's always good to do that because, again, you know, some of the best in the business you know are going to come out with good deals. Like in the case of uh, Drew with Buffalo, I mean, uh, Antonio did not want to go to Buffalo. And so that was a simple thing as saying, hey, he doesn't want to go to the Buffalo Bills. And that's why the Bills were smart enough to be able to uh, get permission from the Steelers to be able to make that phone call. Because if they made that trade and then found out that Antonio Brown was going to hold out 
and not be there, it would have been good. But then, you know, Drew was able to scramble at the last minute and get the, you know, pretty good money out of the uh, Oakland Raiders and satisfy his client. And again, that's like, that's, that's a tough thing to do because, you know, at some point, you know, you're going to run out of teams and really, uh, it was uh, a last minute thing because once the Bills deal fell apart, I mean, the Steelers had nothing and it was almost as if, uh, Antonio was going to have to go back to Pittsburgh, which nobody wanted. Rosenhaus pulling the strings in the NFL on a regular basis. What a human being. Okay, let's pivot real quick. DK Metcalf runs an insane 40 time, looks like a monster. His three cone drill, though, slower than Tom Brady's. Are teams very high on DK Metcalf, or is there some question mark on his mobility? No, I think you have to have question marks on his mobility and I have to see, you know, particularly when they interview him and if he's going to be able to make the, the work ethic to be able to do it. Clearly, clearly he's a freak. I mean, you know, he bench presses more than offensive linemen. He had 27 on the bench press. He, he's 6'3", 228 pounds, around a 4'3", 340, uh, which is incredible. But I think you can see that, you know, pretty much all he can be at this stage is a deep threat or a go-up-and-get-him type of guy because uh, he's not going to do well on the short routes because of his footwork until he gets that better. But still, he's considered to be the best wide receiver in this draft, and it's not a great draft for wide receivers this year. Uh, I think what it, this did is help his stock a little bit, but he's probably going to end up going like about 19 or 20 in the first round. I think Tennessee might take him at 19, uh, and maybe he helped his stock a little bit with the workout. But again, the cone drill and all that, that had to be scary. And again, you look at also his production in college. I think he only had 69 catches. So uh, he, he is the best receiver in this draft or the highest rated receiver, but where he goes is not going to be as high as he probably hopes. Kyler Murray's locked into the one. Is that just uh, everybody in the biz knows that he's going to Arizona? No, there's still some uh, options for them. Like, for example, their decision has to be, do you want Kyler Murray and then get rid of Josh Rosen, or do you want to take Nick Boza, and then what you do with Murray is trade him down to Oakland at four, and then you have a couple options there. I'm sure you get draft choice compensation, probably a number one and maybe a little bit more, or they could take the position that maybe they would take Derek Carr. That could be a possibility, too, because then Kyler Murray would be going to the Oakland Raiders. But, boy, can you imagine the problem that's going to be for Antonio Brown? Because here's yeah. Antonio Brown that, uh, you, know, he, you know, he wasn't happy that Juju Smith-Schuster uh, was able to get more catches than him. And so uh, he comes back and now will have to work with a rookie quarterback. And that means he may not have a 100-catch season. That's why Larry Fitzgerald was wise in kind of a, uh, making the statement. It's like, you know, Antonio, you know, you got to kind of watch what you uh, are doing here because, you know, because how many times did uh, Larry Fitzgerald get stuck with a rookie quarterback or a bad quarterback? And here's a Hall of Fame receiver who ends up getting, you know, less than, you know, less than 100 catches and sometimes less than 100,000 yards. So, uh, yeah, it's like it works well if Derek Carr is going to be there for Antonio. But if Kyler Murray is going to be there, at least until Kyler gets uh, under, uh, figures out how he can play in this league, it could be bad numbers for Antonio. Wait, so what's the conversation about Derek Carr? Are they going to ship him out of Oakland and draft Kyler? Is I, I don't think I – I must not have seen anything like this. There's a chance right now that the Raiders are going to move Derek Carr, draft Kyler Murray, and then Kyler Murray is the starter in Oakland going into Vegas. I did not know that. Yeah, no, that's one of the rumors that was out last week that, uh, you know, Derek Carr is you know, at least being shopped or they're listening to offers on Derek Carr. But the problem is that uh, it's a limited market for trades for quarterbacks. Uh, you know, my, in Miami, they could be interested because they're, they may cut Ryan uh, Tannehill. But the problem is that they want to lose games this year so they can get one of the top picks in next year's draft. So that's that's a problem. And, you know, Washington's already made their move. Denver's already made their move. And so where's the market for Derek Carr in a trade? Uh, now, maybe Arizona would be interested in doing it. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, but that's why I think Arizona is still in that stage where, you know, they have those two options and they're two viable options. But, you know, if not, then they'll just take Kyler Murray at number one. Man, there was the tweet that there was love at first sight between Derek Carr and Antonio Brown as well. I wonder if Antonio, I wonder if Mr. Big Check, Mr. Big Chest has any idea that that could potentially happen or if he's like me and doesn't even know that. That's insane no, to think of. He, he, he probably hasn't thought through that yet, but, uh, you know, at least he can now uh, uh, take that uh, nineteen million dollars that he has and still be happy with that. But then he's not going to be happy if he's not going to get his numbers. And those California taxes are going to play quite a game on that. Um, 
Seattle. Where was it? Was it Oakland or who was the baseball team that was going to pay? I think it was Oakland or Seattle was going to pay Kyler Murray a bunch of money. And then that falls through. How do those conversations happen? Does like the MLB fly to Kyler Murray and say, "Hey, we've been paying you, or we paid you nine million or four million, whatever it was," and then Kyler Murray goes, "You know what? I think I'm out on that." Did they make a play at him to keep him? Is there a chance Kyler Murray goes to the MLB even after the draft, or is that thing all said and done? Uh, I think it's all said and done and he's not going to do that. But what happened is when he was in that deciding stage in January before, well, after he put his name in for the combine and applied for the NFL draft that, uh, you know, cause he got $4.4 million in a signing bonus and it's already in his pocket. So what the, uh, they had a, a, a Oakland A's representative and they had somebody from, I think the, uh, from baseball there to try to see if they can change some of the rules and get him more money. And they tried and tried and tried. And I'm sure that uh, as time goes, they'll still continue to try. But, you know, if Murray's going to end up being the first pick in the draft, then he's going to get significantly more money than what the A's would be able to pay. So, uh, I, I think it's going to, it's one where, you know, they had the conversation. They'll probably still have the conversation. But I think now that if he's going to be the number one pick, you know, he's going to go in the NFL. What's the NFL look like next year, John? Are you, are you excited with this? Whole, there's a whole new era right now with the AAFL launching, having a rough opening week, not being able to make payroll. Do you think there's any NFL usage of the AAFL being a training ground or a scouting field? It looks like an extended senior bowl, really. Do you think there's anybody from the AAFL that's going to end up in the NFL if they have a big season? Oh, yeah, there's no question. I think that there's you know at least two or three quarterbacks are going to get jobs. And I think it's a great situation because, you know, what the AAF needs to do is they need to work out a dual deal with the union, uh, the NFLPA, and the NFL so you can get either you know, eight to ten players on futures contracts or guys that are currently on rosters and get them in the league. And you look and you see there's uh, NFL players that are there, you know, Terrence Garvin, uh, who had been actually in Pittsburgh, started in Pittsburgh, and you know, went to Washington and Seattle, and uh, other guys. You know, you can see Trent uh, Trent Richardson, I think, getting back in the NFL thanks to the AAF because he's he's made some good runs. So no, I think it's it's a it's a good league in that sense, and I think it can only get better. I think that the you know the new owner has come in and uh, he's going to get a better business sense of things and fix things up. So you hope it survives, and it needs to survive. I mean, you know how it was back. You know, in the days when uh, there was the World League and, uh, you know, guys could go over there. And within a year, you know, at that time, you know, you can take a uh, quarterback and get him into the league and maybe even get him to start. Now, that's where I think this is so needed because you you have so much less practice time now for all the teams in the NFL and all the players in the NFL. I mean, you need a league right now to develop a lot of the things that aren't developed during the season and in the off season. Amen. Who wins the Super Bowl next year, John? Well, I think probably the New England Patriots because uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's all set up for them. I mean, you think about in the last four years, they've lost uh, three times on the road to Miami. Now Miami's in the rebuilding mode, and so now that means they'll go 6-0 and in the division because they'll win the game down in Miami. Uh, it's an easy division to win. That means all they have to do pretty much is go 6-4 and four like they did last year against the rest of the league. That gets them to 12 wins. It gets them home field advantage. And then with home field advantage, then they get a chance to, uh, you know, because nobody seems to be able to go into New England and win. Didn't, nobody did last year. So I think it all sets it up for them to go back to the Super Bowl. We'll see who they play, but the, the cycle just continues. That Foxborough is an electric place to play. It's tough to get a win there. And I'll tell you what, it's tough to find a smarter man when it comes to the NFL than at John Clayton NFL host from 10 to noon on 710 ESPN in Seattle and also Schooled with the Professor podcast available on all platforms. Pro Football Hall of Fame member John Clayton, I am so thankful you chose to join me, man. Thank you so much. You're the best. Hey, Pat, thank you. Hey, that that mullet thing, the the rat tail thing. Yeah, was that ever a real thing, or was that all just folklore? Oh no, it's tucked in. I just tucked it. No, it's, that was that was just <laughs> all part of the commercial. <laughs> that commercial is one of the best things that has ever graced my eyes. And, oh, it was fun. Uh, yeah, you did a great acting job there. I didn't know super smart uh, NFL analytics guy could get the acting bug, but you did great in there. Ah, well, thank you. Do you still live in that bedroom there? Oh, uh, absolutely, yeah. 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 Just eat absolutely. Chinese food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, genius John Clayton. 
Big shout out to John Clayton. Um, super insider football talk right there. Yeah, he's a beast. Absolutely. I woke up four minutes before that interview. We had a long night. Took NyQuil last night. Night, night, cuz. <laughs> that interview was scheduled. Very thankful for Gorman getting old John Clayton, the professor. He was incredible on there. But I didn't set an alarm, and I didn't think I was going to sleep in that late. Time change thing really has got mm. me going yeah. still. I mean, we're still a couple of days It'll out. It'll get you. It'll get you. Mm -hmm. I woke up four minutes before that thing. Had to call Cuzzy. And I'll tell you what. I'm thankful for John Clayton. He, he dropped some knowledge bombs on me. It had me feeling good going into the day. Shout out to the professor, at John Clayton NFL. Follow him. Follow at Nick Moraldo, at Boston Connor, at Evan Foxy, at Ty Schmidt with one T there at the end because he's literally up till probably 4 a.m. right now editing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you all so much for listening. You're the absolute greatest humans on earth send us a tweet just saying hello because foxy and i got to travel to orlando yep if you make foxy or i feel very good inside while we're traveling to orlando and while nick and boston connor travel back to indianapolis mm -hmm. tomorrow uh i'd love to send out some free merch yeah old santa pat oh there we go right here in march it's nice Christmas of you in march oh santa yeah a little santa pat a little santa <laughs> Just send us a positive message and positive vibes. We're enjoying the hell out of life. We hope you are as well. So thankful you chose to listen. Um, Ty Schmidt, back in Indianapolis. Probably with a big old fat lipper in his lip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ding. Just staring down the Green Bay Packers website asking <laughs> why the fuck they're not doing anything. <laughs> the Lions are just making plays everywhere. Daggummit, boys. <laughs> Ty Schmidt hit the music, man. And by the way, Packers still got Aaron Rodgers. They don't need to do anything else, Ty. Mm -hmm. Get off the ledge, Ty. Okay? Bing. That's him spitting. <laughs> he's so mad right now. Oh, he's yeah. pissed. Just end the show is what he's saying. All I'm trying to do is end the fucking show so I can upload it and go to bed is mm -hmm. what he's saying. Mm -hmm. It's like 4 a.m. right now. He's yeah. probably doing a couple impressions. Yep. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep himself alive. Yep. Mm-hmm. Probably just slammed about his 16th Red Bull of the day. Mm -hmm. Gut's probably feeling good. Maybe got a little workout in. Maybe Ty Schmidt got a workout Not in. Not a chance. Uh, are you sh yeah, I don't think yeah. so. He said he's been doing the fitness thing. Yeah, you see, yeah, he says that. He's been saying he's when? been doing the fitness Where? thing. Yeah. Well, it was he, the last time he told me, he was literally sitting in front of an entire pepperoni pizza. Like an entire pepperoni <laughs> yeah, pizza that's, that's for funny. himself. I asked him if he wanted my potatoes because normally he takes my potatoes after I eat my, break, or my lunch, my mm -hmm. brunch. And he goes, not today. And I go, why is that? He's like, I've been trying to take care of myself. In less than six <laughs> seconds later, he sat down and opened an entire personal pepperoni pizza and housed the entire thing, shut the box, throw it away. And I just looked at him and he like waved at me and just walked away. Like what he just said didn't even happen. I'm like, bro, Dashman's the best though. The best. Yeah. He's the best. Mm -hmm. Still yeah. a lot of good players out there for the Packers, too. Yeah. It's not yeah. over. He could, it's they, not over. It's not over, Ty. Love Chris that. Ballard has spent no money either, mm -hmm. dude. Chris Ballard, one of the best G recent GMs, obviously. Absolutely. Belichick also not making huge plays. Yeah. And let's just assume he's really good at football. Yeah, we also got 15 picks, so I think we'll be all <laughs> and right. And you guys also have a lot of uh, very good players. We don't really make big plays. I mean, unless people want to come play for the Patriots, we won't pay them money anymore. I don't know if that time she moved out of my play. I'm better coaching football than you are. I'll trade you this. You know, I'm going to go to the Super Bowl. If I can keep our owner from getting massages on the day of the championship, so I think we'd be going to go. <laughs> Ty Schmidt hit the music. Mm -hmm.